Hi everybody and welcome to Engagement HQ TV. Um, we're in our first episode today and I'm really excited to be sharing some hot tips about getting the best out of your Engagement HQ site. Uh, my name is Tracy and I look after learning and um, training for Bang the Table. And with me today is Ray Scanlon. Many of you will know Ray, he looks after all of our local government clients and has been with Bang, Bang, the, da Bang the Table since day dot about and has given a lot of great advice and um, support to our clients. So thanks Ray for being with us today. Oh hi Stacey, it's great to be here. <laughs> hey Jean, this is our first time doing it so we're really excited. So Ray and I wanted to have a chat today about really getting the best out of your system and your platform with all the different tools and some of the sequencing. So um, it's something we've discussed um, on numerous occasions and I just wanted to hand over to Ray to talk a little bit about how he is advising his clients on um, really planning your consultations really well to get the best out of them. So Ray, I know that you have lots of conversations and probably the first thing is about the strategic planning. Yeah, Tracy, look, one of the things that I find at the moment, and it probably relates to consultations regardless of which methodology is being used, but so particularly online uh, engagement and individual consultations, and particularly through Engagement HQ, is that I find quite often, you know, an engagement will start without any pre-warning to, uh, to the community, um, and then it may run for three weeks, it may run for four weeks, and it may run for five weeks, and then it closes. Um, which, which is fine, but I'm tending to think it's missing a couple of phases in here. And I think probably one of the first phases is really that planning internally and, and particularly planning with management teams and looking at perhaps over a full 12 month period, the range of consultations that are likely to be undertaken right across council, a time frame for those consultations, what are the key themes for those consultations. Uh, I think really as well what type of feedback we want from the community and then also you know, how that feedback will be will be used and how the community will be um, informed on, on how it's being used. You know, has it shaped policy? Has it changed the way in which the organisation is working, for instance? Um, so for me, I guess, first off, it's really about, it's about planning. And, uh, you know, I would love to see, and I, I quite often recommend to our local government clients that, you know, they consider putting together a 12-month a plan for their engagement so that you know they're actually meeting with uh, management team members and they're really looking at what their requirements are over a 12 month period and then mapping those out mm -hmm. and I'm tending to think this is a great way to actually start mm -hmm. and I'd like to see I guess clients do more of that. Yeah. Well you know, having said that as well um, I then think you know while it's important to map out what you're doing it's also important to really map out how you're going to do it, you know, what tools you're, you're likely to use. And I think one of the beauties of Engagement HQ is that, you know, it allows you to start by really informing the yeah. community that this consultation is coming up. So, for instance, you know, you may be consulting in and around a recreation strategy in March and you may be consulting around the introduction of green waste um, uh, bins and, and, and a green waste strategy in June. So one of the things that Engagement HQ allows you to do, it allows you, for instance, uh, simply through your key dates uh, widget in your, in your site to detail each of these consultations and when they'll be commencing and when they'll be finishing or even just the month in which they're likely to happen. It also allows you, for instance, to use uh, your news feed. So you can actually put a news article in about each of the consultations over a 12 month period. And, you know, that news article can, can, can contain some simply basic information about the time frame for the consultation, the purpose of the consultation, um, when the consultation is likely to take place, etc., and you know, how it's going to influence, for instance, the introduction of a new book based policy, for instance. So, um, you know, there's a range of things that you can do. And I think one of the things that, that's really important is keeping your community informed and engaged at the same time. And by using, you know, your key dates widget and using your news feed to let your community know what's coming up, you're keeping them informed, you're keeping them engaged because you're constantly adding new information as well. Um, you know, to me, that, that, that management planning and that development of a plan for a 12-month period is probably vital, I yeah. think. I, I, I would like to see more of it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a great way to sort of cross-promote 
your consultations by just having that foresight of what's going on and being able to, and I suppose this leads on to our chat we've, we've had on many occasions about actually being in your site and being aware of what's being said so that you can refer people to other consultations that are coming up if they're starting to talk about particular things, you've got that awareness as a project team of all of the other consultations so that you can start to pull people into different different um, engagement um, sites. It's, it's true, Tracy. But one of the other things that I, I uh, encourage my clients to do in the local government area in particular is, is to run what I call parallel consultations. and. Uh, you know, a, a, a parallel consultation or a couple of good parallel consultations. For instance, in New South Wales, it's a statutory requirement that New South Wales local government engage and consult around local environment plans. And you know, local environment plans are pretty dry for the majority of the community. You know, I, I, I look at them myself and I scratch my head. But, you know, if, if you're running a local environment plan or a cons consultation in and around a local environment plan, now, ideally, it's absolutely fantastic to run one uh, parallel to that, but maybe around an upgrade to a local community f uh, facility or some community infrastructure, a park, ovals, those types of things, because you're attracting people in the first instance uh, more so to participate in the, the um, less dry topic and the one that has, has much more impact and meaning to them, like a local park or upgrading of sports facilities, and you'll find that they cross-fertilise and they will become involved in the local environment plan. They may not necessarily provide a submission. They may not necessarily, you know, contribute through discussion forums or other feedback tools. But they are likely to download and have a look at information. So you are attracting them and you're, you're informing your community. You know, I, I think if I look frequently at activity reports, which I do, I seem to spend a lot of time in the back end of of many of our consultations. Um, and I look at the number of document downloads, for instance, on some consultations, it's really surprising. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there was a consultation in and around a local environment plan that while it didn't have a great deal of feedback, it had something like, I think, 13,000 individuals visit the consultation. Right. They downloaded something like 36,000 documents. Yeah. So in reality, what you have there, you have a really well-informed community. You know, this is. This, this actually relates to each individual downloading at least three documents from the library. Um, so, yeah, very informed. Um, so that was cross-fertilised, if you like, yeah. by other consultations that were running parallel to that. So I think it's important to, to do that. And, again, this actually comes with the planning and the pre-planning and the timing of your consultations. Uh, and that's setting out an annual, you know, if you like, consultation uh, framework and detailing when you're consulting around uh, the, the, the various issues or the various programs or the ideas that you're consulting around again. Um, so by you know, just planning, yeah. uh, you can really dramatically increase the level of involvement. You can ensure that your community is really informed about what's happening as well. Yeah. And Ray, I'd imagine as well, well, we know that Closing the loop on your consultations is really important and um, as another way to also keep people involved, I suppose. They've taken the time um, and perhaps you could talk a little bit about how people can go about in closing that loop because it's a big thing that's always discussed but it's one of the hardest things because it's tacked on the end and often people have moved on to the, new, the next thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Look, it, I, I think it's really important when you're inviting people to contribute, uh, you know, their advice and to provide their feedback. Um, I think it's, it's polite, if you like, for want of a better word, but I think it's also necessary that you provide some feedback on, on, uh, on uh, how that advice has been taken, uh, how it's shaped, for instance, policy, how it's actually shaped the direction that your organisation, your council, for instance, may be taking. Um, and, you leave, and you keep people up to date. Um, like, really, a way in which to do this. And, one of the things that I find interesting with Engagement HQ at the moment is that basically all of its feedback tools, for instance, and its communication tools can be switched on and off independently of one another. Um, like for me, I think in that, in that pre-planning and setting out a consultation schedule um, at the beginning of a financial year or the beginning of a calendar year, um, 
It allows you, first and foremost, to keep people informed about what's happening. As you move into, the, into an individual consultation itself, uh, individual consultations also have their own use fee. So you can use that use fee in the first instance, even though the consultation phase may not have opened yet, to provide people with information about it. You can also add to your library documents to the library that provide people with some pre-reading before the consultation stage as well. And one of the things that I'm finding at the moment, we have uh, a large number of clients that are starting to use the question and answer tool so that by providing that preliminary information, for instance, they're using the question and answer tool in the first instance to allow people to ask questions. Yeah. And what's really interesting about that is that you know, before the consultation actually commences, those questions are being asked. Um, uh, I guess an accredited officer within the organisation is responding to those questions. And I'm finding that you know, some of those questions are starting to shape the consultation. So, you know, it, it's great. It's not only, uh, you know, the organisation uh, determining um, the themes for the consultation, but it actually is allowing the community also through those question and answers to help shape some of the themes and some of the things to be discussed. Uh, what I really like then is, you know, maybe um, uh, switching off that question and answer tool for a period of time. Then you can actually come in and you can use a, a survey tool and capture some hard data and really find out about whether or not these particular things are important to people, what impact they have on people, whether they're negative, positive impacts, etc. So you can then, you know, for instance, come in and incorporate the survey tool, place the survey tool after around about a two-week period, then come into some, some open community discussion in and around some of the ideas that have been um, brought up, some of the impacts that have been um, identified through using the survey tool, etc. And then really, I guess, just open it up for the community to discuss ideas, yeah. Um, yeah. to express their thoughts, their feelings. Um, and I think one of the interesting things with the discussion forums as well is that, you know, that they really allow people across the broader community to appreciate a little more the impacts that, that a decision may have on other sectors of the community, um, to be a little bit more empathetic, but also to look at ways in which to work towards some type of resolution that suits the broader community as well. Then I encourage in that instance as well for, again, an accredited officer to be, de to be identified as a member of the project team, which allows them to engage in that discussion um, uh, by engaging in that discussion with the community, it's actually shown that we're here with you, we're listening, we're involved, uh, we're responding to ideas that you have. And you know, a great way for this, for instance, you know, if we were looking to introduce a, uh, a waste management scheme that was going to cost $9 million over 10 years, for instance, and somebody came in and, and, and said, I think this is a waste of money, this is $90 million we're spending over 10 years, who's going to pay for this? It simply allows that project team member to come in immediately and say, hey, look, it's not going to cost 90 million over 10 years. You can find out more about this by reading this document in the library and going to page 13 in this document. It will cost 9 million over 10 years. The impact will be minimal on rates or, you know, on costs, etc. And likewise, if somebody comes up with a great idea in and around waste and, you know, it may be... Um, they come back with an idea and they say, hey, I love the idea of green waste and collecting green waste, but what I like better is saving my green waste and putting it on my garden's compost. Mm. Has mm. council considered, as opposed to simply providing a green waste bin to provide the option for people to have compost bins? Hey, I'd love a compost bin and keep it. It then allows that project team member to come in and say, fantastic, great idea, what do people think of this? Yeah. And then to generate discussion in and around that. So council is getting really good, strong feedback from its community. Yeah. Um, it also yeah. allows um, you know, the, the project officer as well to create an immediate quick poll and say, okay, guys, we want to find out how many are interested in compost bins or green waste bins yeah. and direct people yeah. to complete that that uh, quick poll. So it's sort of that interaction and, and you know, I really like the idea of being able to use individual feedback tools and communication tools sequentially. Once you get to the point where the consultation has, has ended or the consultation period has ended, you can simply close all of your feedback tools 
And then you simply leave the project open or the consultation open, switch it to your newsfeed, and you use your newsfeed to keep people up to date with any decisions in and around that consultation, and also to be able to come back and advise them of how their feedback and advice has, has uh, impacted the, the final decision. And of course, you still have your library open, so you can add any new documents into the library in and around that consultation. So I, I, I guess, Tracy, um, getting back to where we started. Yeah, <laughs> We've done the loop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's all about planning, you know, and I, and I think that long-term planning over a 12-month period is really important, you know, mapping out the consultations, letting the community know about those consultations, um, and then within the consultation, don't simply open it up during the consultation period, you know, have it running so that you're letting people know some of the key elements of the consultation before it starts, yeah. allowing them to ask some questions in and around the consultation that can actually shape the consultation themes and questions, etc. Um, and then, you know, move into using, you know, survey tools, quick polls, discussion forums, um, and allow people to contribute the way that uh, suits them best, you know. I, I, uh, I'm a great believer in that planning and that long-term planning. So for me, getting the best out of your engagement HQ site is all about planning um, and it's all about using uh, everything within there to its optimum as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And we're coming up to um, financial year, so it's a great time to start that planning for all of our, our clients and having a look at over the next 12 months, starting your July 1, how you're going to roll that out. Um, but yeah, no, that's been really great and um, I know that we've got a few blog posts and things that came out of Big Bang last year that discuss some of these points we've touched on, so we'll make sure that we add them to the bottom of the blog and um, we'll also provide um, our clients with uh, a little um, one page, a really simple planning tool that they can have a look at just to start thinking about what they're doing to plan. But um, thanks yep. so much, Ray, for your time. And um, I'm sure it will not be the last. <laughs> and, um, and yes, thanks everyone for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you at the next episode where we'll be um, discussing some other facet of online community engagement and how you can use EHQ to its, um, to its best. But thanks, thanks for um, joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>